Yeah, we, we want to get started immediately. We don't want to waste any time because the time goes like, I mean, we look up and it's gone. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this day and thank you for bringing us together once again for morning manner. Well, I tell you, I love these conversations we had. And thank you for, well, creating this. I mean, you, you brought this into being. And you know, I know it was because there was a response to the pandemic. But we're not stopping. I mean, whether this pandemic, we don't have time to worry about that. But we're going to keep this going because this is our time. This is our Gethsemane where you meet us and bless our time together and everybody that this call, everybody coming on this call. Thank you for helping us with those technical difficulties. And we're just gonna give you all the praise in Jesus name, amen. Good morning, Manor. Good morning, Manor. Is that Diane? Welcome. Yes, sir. Welcome everybody. Good to see everybody on this wonderful, wonderful, crisp December morning. And, uh, you know, I want you to know that I really believe um, that we are in a real important transitional moment. This is a time when God has really impressed upon me the significance of making you aware of where we have come and where we are going. I mean, this um, reset and Sunday was so weird because I had a whole sermon laid out for what I was going to say, what I thought Lord would have me to say. And he just like, he said, go down. I said, well, I'll leave my notes. He said, go on down. And the next thing I knew, I never read my notes. But uh, I just want you to know that this is really critical because this setup has set you up. That this uh, period of uh, radical change in how you think, the way you think, and what you think. I mean, this is really, you know, matter of fact, just so I'll stay with my notes, Kenya. I need you to share your screen that I sent you. I need you to share that. Now look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up on the um, website so you can, um, so that you can uh, see it. Okay, can you gotta make it a little bigger than that? Cause you know a lot of us got glasses and we still can't see. I mean, <laughs> I mean we're claiming our healing. I mean, we're believing God for our deliverance, but we got to have a bigger picture. And so it's so funny because when you look at the progress of mankind through our history, there, are, there have been a lot of breakthrough discoveries that opened the door for all kinds of developments and advancements that literally put mankind on a different path. I mean, these things accelerated the quality of life and triggered all kinds of improvements and enhancements of how we do things and how we live. For example, you know, in ancient times when the discover, they discovered the wheel, I mean, it changed the course of history because when you had a wheel that you could travel and then also you could move goods from place to place. I mean, it really set uh, mankind on a different course, an accelerated course. And even when you think about something like the computer, and a computer has we on a computer now. It revolutionized life as we know it. And uh, and or something like a cell phone. I mean, 20 years ago, we nobody had no cell phone. And yet, I mean, who doesn't have a cell phone today? And I tell you, one of the main crises we face in life is when we can't find our cell phone. <laughs> And, but I want to, I would dare say that beginning at the uh, close of 2020 and all throughout 2021, we're going to look back. We're going to look back on this time as a time when God um, 
when God reset us, when he changed our trajectory, our path, and uh, he set us on a plane where we could live different and manage our lives better and well, just have an overall shift, a change in, uh, in how we operate, and how we function. And um, it's like the discovery of these tr truths have allowed us to operate um, more freely and have greater power to respond to challenges and, and just our overall well being. I mean, it's like so much is connected to the renewal of your mind, so much, and the healing of your heart, to have your heart healed. I mean, and just the pulling down of strongholds and what that scripture say, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's like, it's like certain truths have had the effect of eradicating um, long standing mental barriers and obstructions that were limiting and restrictive. I'm almost, I'm all the way down to familiar spirits that have been handed down throughout the, throughout your generations. And uh, the reset has been a full scale dem demolition job, okay? When God has gone in and destroyed these hangups, these entrenchments, these false assumptions, um, erroneous ways of thinking that stood in the way of us being free. And uh, you take something as simple as just being able to feel good within yourself or to be satisfied within yourself. The change in your thinking has made it possible for things like to feel content, to relax, and literally to, uh, to have the easing of pain, the easing of mental pains. And when I say mental pain, I'm not talking about physical pain, I'm talking about dealing with regrets, dealing with um, a sense of, uh, sense of remorse, guilt, carrying around a certain sense of uh, loss, hurt. I mean, to have truths come in and literally bring about relief. You know, the energy that you use. I was talking Sunday about how you have these corporate mechanisms, these ways in which you thought, well, this is my personality, this is the way I am, but really, it really isn't your personality. It's a reaction to something traumatic uh -huh. that happened and a reaction to something that uh, shaped you in a negative way. The fear of rejection, for example. You know, the feeling of inadequacy. I mean, those are not, that's not, it's not your nature. That was, that was an effect of something that happened, you know? And, um, it's like, you think, well, I'm a shy person. No, nah, you're not really shy. It's just that, you know, something happened that caused you to lose confidence. And so it's your fear of rejection and failure. That's, that's what's causing you to act like that. You know, I can't understand why I can't seem to, I can't seem to love my daughter. I can't seem to, it's, I didn't matter and no, and you don't realize that that's the result of how your mother treated you. And so I guess what I'm saying is that when you get truth that changes your way of thinking, okay, it, uh, it causes an end to the turmoil. Yeah, the end of turmoil, that, that, uh, it's like you do something and you feel a resistance. You feel uh, a nervousness. You feel like you can't perform those functions. And I'm talking about like 
whenever you got to get up in front of people and do a presentation, you like get so overly uh, inhibited. And a lot of that goes back to something that happens, goes back to some particular experience that you had. But with the word coming forth and truth, arresting those uh, long standing thoughts and ways, you start to realize, wait a minute here. I have a new identity. I am not that kind of person. Changes your narrative from being a person and all this stuff about, well, I'm not that kind of person. Well, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. All that changes because you start to realize, wait a minute here. <laughs> the truth is that, that is not how I have to be. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, you couldn't understand why you couldn't do certain things. That was because there was a certain way of thinking and certain things that, you know, were uh, areas of pain, areas of restriction, came from some area of false reality that had been planted that caused you to feel that deficiency. And so this has been about a resetting of your mind. Yeah, resetting of your mind. Because the resetting of your mind is the resetting of your life. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like there's been a shutdown so we can restart on a better platform and put you on a better trajectory. It's like things become possible that were not possible before because, I mean, before, it wasn't even up for consideration. I mean, you never even would even have considered doing that because your mind literally was shut down in certain areas. It was, it, it was closed. And you weren't conscious of it until there was truth that awakened your mind. And, and now it's like you've been opened up so that things a possible that never even would have crossed your mind. And, uh, and I like, I think this passage here in, in uh, Ephesians, you know, it's just so, it's like Paul's been with us. And it's like Paul's, Apostle Paul said, okay, let me explain to you what the setup is. Uh, let me explain to you what the reset has set you up to be and to do. And uh, that gives us three things, three main improvements. And it's important for you to notice because if you're gonna retain this, if, if the reset is gonna be permanent, if you're gonna actually change and never go back, because let me tell you something, let me tell you something. The battle is about whether you can stay free, whether you can stay in this mode of thinking. Because I'm gonna tell you something, the enemy wants to pull you back and uh, it's familiar to you. It's something that you were in for a long time. And the battle is to not adopt that regressive way of thinking. And it's very, um, it's very enticing because it's so familiar, even though it's bad. It's something that, you, that your faculties are used to. And, uh, and so you have to, first of all, you have to get what I'm saying because you need to be aware of the fact that now that I'm free, as I was saying on Sunday, now I've got to retrain my mind. I've got to literally develop a different uh, impulse, so to speak. I have to, I have to exert power. You see, it's one thing to get free, but it's another thing to exert power. It's one thing to get away, but it's another thing to go in. You see what I'm saying? 
And so this is a really important time because as great as the reset has been, it's critical that we hit the ground running because there are great things ahead. And I'm not just talking about you feeling better, which is really good too. It's good to feel better. But I'm talking about three things, capacity, confidence, and comprehension. Greater capacity, heightened confidence, and a keen conception of reality. Those are the three things. Without going back over that scripture and rereading it, you know, because I done that Sundays in a row. If you didn't, maybe you could get the tape because I don't want to review that. I just want to pull out the principle and expand on that because it really does boil down to those three things. It boils down to the way that you can be, the way that you can do, and the way you can see. Sorry, I didn't make my notes. That was a late addition. But three things, the way you can be, the way you can do, and the way you can see. Another way it would be like um, uh, stability, security, and a sense of things. And uh, it's like a situation where um, Paul talks about how that you will have a, a, well, let me read it. He says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. This is Ephesians 3.16, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. This is a actual uh, process where the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, literally injects life into your human spirit. I probably should just do a teaching on the human spirit, you know, because people don't realize the role of the human spirit. And when they read spirit in the Bible, they think the spirit is the Holy Spirit, you know? But no, when you see a small case S, that's your spirit, you are spirit. Without reviewing too much, you have to understand that you are like God. You were made in the image of God. How are you in the image of God? You're in the image of God because while he is a triune being, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, you are a triune being. Yo, uh, soul, flesh, and spirit. And your spirit is from God. That's why it's eternal. Your spirit never dies. Do you know you'll never die? You're like God in a sense. You live forever. Because when God formed man from the dust, he breathed. I love the, I tell you, so much is coming to my mind. The breath of God is the spirit of God. And so he imparted in us his spirit. We became, scripture says, a living soul, which literally means a a physically encased spirit, a spirit inside of an outward shell. That's why when you die on Sunday, when you die, that shell goes back to the dust, but that spirit, that spirit emerges or separates from that physical shell. And, uh, you know, that spirit is still alive. Now, while you're in your physical body, while you are technically what you call being physically alive. Of course, don't mistake that to think that when you die, you go into some darkness and you're no longer, you know, you kind of floating and never, never, no, no, no. The separation of your physical body, still, you are still conscious. 
you're still aware and you are still you, okay? Of course, you want to give your life to the Lord so that you won't go to hell, okay? You want to go to hell. <laughs> you want to go to be with the Lord, you know? Uh, that's why we got to tell our family and friends and everybody, we got to tell them because they just don't know that uh, you don't want to go to torment me because the worst thing about hell is it's forever. You, because you're eternal, the torment doesn't ever end. And so it's a terrible place. But we're not talking about that. That's another day. But my point is, is that that spirit that you have, right, is of the same essence as God. And because it's of the same essence of God, there is a level of intimacy and closeness that can happen between you and God. There is a oneness. And God created you because he wanted to exchange with you at the most intimate levels. You were created for his pleasure, not his need, but his pleasure. And God, who is love, wanted you to be an object of his love. And he created you so that you could love him. And this exchange of love is what makes, makes us in an ideal sense of being. We have the capacity for joy that could be full when we connect and interact and have this love exchange between us and God. That's the greatest thing in the world. That's greater than any experience you can have. The experience of interacting intimately with God. And that's and so it's so important to understand that the Holy Spirit is the agent of this interaction. The Holy Spirit is the one who injects our spirit. And when he injects our spirit with truth, because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, as you have been receiving truth, your spirit becomes vibrant. It becomes alive. I mean, it literally is bursting forth. That's what Jesus was talking about when he was talking to the woman at the well. I'm sorry, Kenya. I'm stuck at a spot right now. I'll let you know. <laughs> That's the only thing about paper. I get the movement from it. But it's so important to understand when he was talking to the woman at the well, what did he tell her? He said, the water that I give you will never thirst again. And you know what he said? He said, it will be as a well, a spring, springing up to everlasting, a fountain that's springing up to everlasting life. What was he talking about? He was talking about the exchange between the Holy Spirit and our spirit and how that the connection of the Holy Spirit in us, to us, channeling life in us is what gives us vibrancy, gives, makes us alive. <laughs> it makes us, well, full of life, you see? And so God wants us to understand that this is a connection. This is a channel. This is like being plugged in, so to speak, you know? And uh, one of the reasons why this reset was important was so that God could not just give you information, but that he could connect you to a stream of information. God's intention is not to give you something that you can access or you can go get I got to go read my word, you know? No, his aim is to allow your spirit to be connected to the Holy Spirit so that there is this ongoing transmission of life inside you and to you. And I told you before, your, your spirit is your thinking mechanism. 
Okay, when you think of spirit, think of thinking, okay? See, like I said, the role of the spirit, I need to just do a whole digit on the spirit, what the spirit is, what the spirit does. Because when you realize that your spirit is a thinking mechanism, you understand why the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Because what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit gives your spirit something to believe, something to think, something to be the substance of what it thinks. And that something is truth. Truth is the element of power. And when you receive truth in your spirit, you literally are energized. You are empowered. And this is what makes you strong. Because he says, be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He uses the word inner man. Inner man is the same thing as the spirit. Okay. And so, and so it's important to understand and the process for how you are, what's the word, stabilized is by the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus could say stuff like, you know, um, nothing's impossible for faith. Or that uh, he, it, there could be scriptures in the Bible that says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's why the Bible says stuff like, you know, greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. Why? Because the injection of spiritual power in your spirit makes you unstoppable, undeniable, unflappable. There is nothing in the entire repertoire of the demonic realm that can, can block, stop, or prevent you because you're connected. You're connected to a source, you're plugged in. There is Holy Ghost power emanating in you and to you and through you. And you have a strength, you have a staying power. You have an ability to not give in, not quit, not fail, not um, go down. And uh, I'm gonna go back to my. I'm gonna go back to my sheet, that King. <laughs> I guess the best. I was trying to think of how I could illustrate this. You know, you take for example electricity. Electricity is um, comes in what they call wattage. And so a certain level of wattage is necessary for you to perform certain functions like your appliance or something like that. And you gotta have enough wattage for whatever you're trying to do. Think of this in the same way. And it's so funny because electricity is such a good illustration of what I'm talking about because electricity flows, okay? Electricity is not stagnant. Electricity is not something that is necessarily standing still and you pick it up. No, it's flowing through that, that, that plug in the wall. There's electricity flowing. And what you do is you just plug into the flow. I mean, it is such a good illustration of how that God wants us to, to flow, to, cut, to tap into the flow, you know? And uh, it's funny how people, they don't understand that the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is, um, is not stagnant. The Holy Spirit is active. The Holy Spirit is engaged. It's the, whole, the Holy Spirit uh, is not, you see, like people say, I'm, I give example, like people say, I'm, I gotta go stand on the word. No, no. It's not a situation where God gives you a word and then you got to like stand on it. Standing is standing still. No, it's not a word that you heard 
it's a word that you are hearing. Okay, it's not that God told me this five years ago and I'm standing on it. No, 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 no. He told me this five years ago and he is telling me now. There is a continual communication because the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. I'm chasing a rabbit right now. But the Holy Spirit leads you. That means that he is an ongoing influence. And it's more connection than it is something that I go, like I said, access. Faith is not what God said. Faith comes from what God is saying. You have faith when you're connected to the source. You see what I'm saying? You know, you know, a lot of times people get all stressed out because they say, you know, I know God told me that, but I just don't say that. Listen, listen, okay. Stop uh, getting a word from God and then stopping, okay? Keep going, keep going. You see, when Peter, God, Jesus said, come, right? When he said, come, Peter started coming, okay? Now, Peter couldn't see Jesus because as you see from that passage, it was too dark, wind was blowing, everything. How did he know where Jesus was? He knew where Jesus was by his voice. Jesus said, come. He went toward the voice, okay? As long as he kept listening to the voice and headed toward the voice, he walked on water. What happened? He stopped listening. He stopped listening and he started listening and getting distracted by it and listening to the wind and the waves. And he lost his voice. He lost Jesus' voice. That's when he started to sing. When we talk about faith, we're talking about staying connected to his voice. Yeah, I'm listening. It's really awesome. God said something to you 10 years ago. But if you're trying to hold on to a word from 10 years ago, that word cannot give you faith for right now. Why did, listen, I'm chasing a rabbit right now, but I love this rabbit. <laughs> you ever wonder why God had um, the children of Israel to eat manna? You know, morning manna. You know why he did that? Because he wanted to teach them a principle for how in the new covenant we ought to operate. Because the thing about that manna was, that manna came every morning. It probably came at six o'clock. <laughs> and when it came every morning, right, they had to eat it. They had to consume it for that day, right? They got lazy one time. They said, we just go get enough and we ain't come back out here tomorrow morning. We just go, we just go keep this manna. And uh, have leftovers tomorrow. Guess what? It turned to worms. What was God cheating? He was showing them that look, my word is not something that you store up and then you retain and you keep for later. My word is a connection. You got to stay plugged in. You you have to get fresh. My word is always fresh. Like I was saying about electricity, electricity is a current. You tap into it, okay? You know, it's not like a battery. You know, battery is stored up energy. You know, you use a battery and it helps to power your appliance. Or but how many know that battery will run out? You got to change that battery at some point because it can't hold with so much. We're not talking about that power. We're talking about a power that's flowing from the Holy Spirit to your spirit. And this reset has been about connecting to your source and drawing from that power. And the quality of that connection dictates the quality of your wattage. So that whenever there is a power shortage or should we say 
a circuit that breaks. What I got to do is I got to manage my connection. That's what Paul was talking about when he said, be strong in the Lord and what? In the power of his might. In other words, stay in a state where you are receiving. Now, let me tell you this. When the Holy Spirit injects you with truth, and truth is the medium, Truth is the way that God gives you strength and he transmits strength to your spirit. What do you mean by that, Pastor Steve? What are you talking about medium? Well, medium is the means of exchange. Medium, let's see, medium. Okay, for example, okay, language is the medium of communication between two individuals. Like I'm talking to you right now. And the re reason why you can understand me is because I'm talking to you through the medium of human language, for example, English. Because you speak English, I speak English, I can communicate things to you. You can understand what I'm saying. You probably could even tell me something because you have, we on the same medium and that medium is language. Well, that's the same thing with the spirit. The spirit is the medium of life. And it's so funny because, you know, I don't know no Spanish. I mean, I can't speak no French. I can't speak, you know, Hebrew and well, the other different languages. And so well, when I go to the, go to the store, to get, you know, the hair supply and the Koreans are in there talking, and they be going on and on talking to each other. I'd be wondering if they talk about me, but I don't say that, but <laughs> they're speaking a language that I don't know. And so I can't communicate with them on that language because I don't know that. I can't have that medium. Same way, the same way with the spirit. That's why you have to be born again. That's what Jesus was, matter of fact, um, since I'm chasing the rabbit, why don't I chase it a little further? Turn to John, the third chapter. I just want to read one verse here. When Jesus had this discussion with Nicodemus, he's talking about the medium, the medium of the spirit. Because in, um, um, verse five of chapter three, y'all got that John three, and those y'all driving, just, just read along with me, just listen, okay, we don't want you to take your hand off the wheel, he says, Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto you, this is verse five, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, capital S, and whenever you read the Bible, okay, always, whenever you see spirit, pay a special attention to whether it's large case as capitalized as or small case s. That's really important in terms of what it means, okay? A lot of people don't know the distinction. They don't know the difference. You missed the whole meaning. This is a capital S, meaning born of the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's God. He says he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, in order to enter the realm of God, the realm of which is the same as the kingdom of God, which is the same as the, as the spirit of God. And that's a realm you lit, lit. See, the physical realm and the spiritual realm coexist with each other. They overlap, okay? And it's like the realm of the spirit is completely, you're completely oblivious to it when you're not born again. You don't have that faculty, just like I was saying, I don't speak Korean. It's like when I hear them talking, I, that's all foreign to me. Why? Because I don't have that platform, that medium. Well, when you get born again, you get introduced to the platform. You get introduced to the medium of the spirit. And that's what allows you to be able to be in check with life. He goes on to say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Now, both of those are small case F, isn't it? Because the flesh is flesh. The flesh is um, your human flesh, your physical body. That has to do with your human birth. 
okay? You are a human being, okay? That talking about another term that's used in the Bible is the natural man, okay? Physical man, human man. He said, but that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Now, once again, capital S, you see that? And then small case S. The capital S is the Holy Spirit. The small case S is your spirit. Your spirit is the most important faculty in your life. You must feed that spirit. That spirit must be built up. You got to give a lot of attention to that spirit. Listen, I'm not taking nothing away from looking good and making sure that you got your makeup on and making sure your hair is cut and that you get the pimples off your face. I mean, oh, that's great and good. But do not neglect your spirit. Of all the things you do, you have to pay a special attention to making sure your spirit is full of truth, that you access the Holy Ghost and allow the Holy Ghost to inject you with life. Let me tell you something. This has benefit in all aspects of your life. Number one, you have a divine energy. You see, you won't get tired. You won't be so tired. You can't be frustrated. You can't be miserable. Things cannot get to you. When your spirit is strong and when you have been injected with the Holy Ghost truth, people do stuff and act in different ways, but you have a vibrancy. You have a, a, a way of resiliency. Okay, Paul says, as truth and as the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, injects your life, you become, you become strong. You get strengthened in your, in your spirit. It is evident to everyone at any time how strong your spirit is. And it is something that... Well, hold on a second. So, okay, put, we'll put it on mute. Who is that? Who's on? Somebody need to get on mute, okay? But... um. It's so absolutely important that your spirit be your priority. That's why you have as much as you can to allow your thinking to be a conduit for truth. The more you think truth, the stronger you are. I mean, you have a capacity. As I was saying about electricity, same thing with horsepower. It's like, I like to go fishing, you know? And uh, fishing, you know, like I have a boat. Well, you know, I, if I'm gonna pull, I don't have it right now, but I'm gonna get a truck at some point. But the truck that pulls that boat has gotta have enough horsepower. That transmission has gotta be strong enough to be able to pull that boat. You see what I'm saying? That, that horsepower, or even when you talk about computers, megabytes, now don't ask me to explain that because I don't know nothing about that. But I do know that there are certain software that requires a certain amount of, of power or megabytes in that, or like the phone has to have a certain amount of, let's say your iCloud is full. Well, faith is a force power you have a certain quantity of faith jesus talked about that when he said oh ye of little faith or one scripture one translate says insufficient faith we want to have enough faith to match the situation you want to have enough faith power inside you that stuff can't knock you out and throw you into a place of dysfunction. I mean, like them people at work, you wanna have enough power that they can't get to you. They can't stop, they can't you know, deflate you and rob you of your command. 
that, that that's what we're talking about. He says that you by strengthen with might by his spirit in the inner man. I love it because he's talking about a reinforcement. He's talking about a ongoing injection. Amen. You know, something that's operating and enriching, empowering. You can operate with a strength. Then he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That's the second thing. And the second thing has to do with you being able to have this strong confidence, capacity. And now we're talking about confidence. When I say confidence, I'm talking about a greater surety and certainty. I'm talking about an emboldenedness or an assertiveness about the way you are and the way you're going to be. I'm talking about it's like it's like you're in command and you have a stability about yourself. See, when you talk about confidence and faith, they are synonyms, okay? When I'm saying faith, I'm talking about confidence. And when I say confidence, I'm talking about faith. And a faith mindset displays itself in the level of confidence that you have. And that's what truth does. The Holy Spirit gives you truth so that you can be confident, so that you are not nervous, you are not worried, you're not uneasy, you're not anxious, you're not afraid. You operate from a place where you are certain. Why? Because of your faith mindset. Because the reality of truth puts you at ease. Because you rely on truth, because you believe in truth. You know, whenever you come out and attack, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit tells you the truth. Why? So that you can trust and rely and have a sense of not panicking, not losing your composure. Truth puts you at ease. And uh, it's like somebody come over to you and say something to you. What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit tells you, this is what I want you to believe. I know that's what they're saying. This is what I want you to believe. So, well, um, things look like this going on. Next time. The Holy Spirit says, uh-uh. It's like Jairus. Jesus, you know, the camera said, yes, the daughter's dead. Jesus said, look, ho on. Keep your confidence. Keep your confidence. Believe only. What does believing do? Believing is the basis of me believing in the truth and being confident. Okay? And this mindset teaching has been about giving you greater confidence. I want you to have a swag. I want you to walk around without making apologies or feeling like, can I do that? Oh, that's too much. And turn down assignments. I'm not good at that. No, this reset is changing, as I said earlier, the way you are, the way you can do things, the way you are. Then last, so I only cut five more minutes. Um, this is my favorite one, which I really, I might have to do more on this one, is he says, may be able to comprehend with all saints, what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. Comprehend, capacity, confidence, now comprehension. That is the ability to discern or to see truth. This has to do with the ability to accurately diagnose what's going on, to interpret what's happening, to have a sense 
of where, a sense where you're fully aware of what you're dealing with and what it is you need to do. See, faith is possible because you have an apprehension of truth and you have an inherent spiritual intuition and knowing what truth applies in that situation. It's like you have a way of recognizing what's significant and what truth should be put in place. Take away my screen, Mom. Take away my screen. Yeah. See, I need you to understand that the reality that you live in is to be in the reality of faith. And as I've been telling you, the way you think is heavily influenced by the way you see your perception. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. In both cases, substance, evidence. In both cases, this is a perception. This is how you can see truth that allows you to know what you can anticipate. What is ahead? What's going to happen? Okay. And then evidence, which means conviction, which means certainty. You have a absolute reliance and confidence about the way things are. Now listen, the enemy is a master of deception and he, he tries to use a deception to rob you of your perception. That's where the battle is. The battle is, are you gonna, are you gonna believe what God is saying or are you gonna believe what he is saying? Are you gonna believe what the truth is or are you gonna believe this false reality that he's promoting? This is where faith comes in because faith allows me to operate in a reality where I'm always conscious of what is coming and I'm always assured at the way things are. And I know the difference between the truth and false reality. And I live in the truth. I let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. And so this is really critical to my ongoing deliverance. See, you cannot be permanently delivered until you shift into a mode where you are perceiving truth. You know how to think truth. You know how to apply truth. You know how to look at a situation and not see it for how it looks in the natural, but to know what God's word says that is true. And you don't believe the physical circumstances. You believe in the reality of what God's word says. And that is the basis of you being able to thrive in all circumstances, in any situation. Matter of fact, Paul said, whatever state I am, I can be content. He said, it doesn't really matter whether I'm a base or He said, I can suffer need, and guess what? I can still be in command. I'm still just as at peace, you know? Lord knows I didn't want to be in this prison. I didn't want to be, you know, locked up in here. I wanted to go out and preach, but guess what? <laughs> Not that I speak in respect of one, I learned whatever state I am, therewith I am content. That's a good question I should ask you. How content are you right now? You say, well, I'm waiting for this to happen. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need, no, no, no. That's not about what you have in the natural. It's about how you think. And it has everything to do with how you're perceiving your situation. You are to have a way of thinking that allows you to know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. No weapon formed against me shall prosper.
Hey man, how's my time going? I was just getting going. <laughs> In summation. <laughs> summation. Number one, number one, God is injecting your spirit. Your spirit is expanded over this reset. And you now are capable. Matter of fact, the devil's nervous about you because you don't break. You like a Timex watch. You take a lick and it keep on ticking. <laughs> and secondly, you have a mindset. You have a way of thinking. Man, you walk around and you used to hold your head down. Now you hold your head up. And you're like looking at things. And you're knowing what you're capable of. And you knowing that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. Sometimes you come under attack, but you remember what Pastor said? She said the Marlboro tree start to move. All you got to do, walk over there and wait for the Marlboro. No, some, anybody waiting for some Marlboro trees to move? Hallelujah. I ain't worried about nothing going on in my life because I know God sent me to just look and wait. And when the Marlboro trees move, I'm going to I'm going to move into what God promised. Are y'all with me out? And last but not least, I see victory. I see power. I see, I'm optimistic because the way I see things. And the devil tried to point out to me something that's wrong. I said, well, that don't look like nothing wrong. That looked like an opportunity for God to move. I got a way of seeing things. My time gone. And you got to go to work. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. We don't want to just have a great awakening and then go back. Allow, our, allow there to be a stabilizing, a dry of the cement, a permanent, a permanent state of being where we operate with capacity, confidence, and comprehension. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And one last thing I want to tell you, I need you to help me because I need, I need you to come up with a one or two sentence stating how the reset has changed your life. I need you to send that to me, okay? And maybe a one or two sentence about morning matter, say how it was a blessing. And then I want my calendar. If you enjoyed the calendar, I need a one or two